Gaius Julius Caesar was born on July 13, 100 BC to a noble family. However, they had very little wealth, and as a result, the family had very little influence or power in Rome. In 85 BC, Caesar's father died suddenly, making Gaius the head of the family at age 16. Caesar was politically active as a teenager and opposed the new dictator of Rome, Lucius Cornelius Sulla. Sulla was fond of having his opponents murdered, so the teenage Caesar was forced to flee Rome, leaving behind his new wife Cornelia. At one point, he was captured by Sulla's soldiers, but he managed to escape by paying them a bribe. Caesar returned to Rome and was reunited with Cornelia after Sulla died. And in 76 BC, the couple had a daughter, Julia. The following year, Caesar, by then in his mid-twenties, was kidnapped by pirates in the Aegean Sea while traveling. But when Caesar discovered the low price for his ransom, he was insulted and insisted on a greater sum. While the money was being collected, he charmed the pirates with his, quote, boldness of speech. But soon after his release, he sought revenge and had his former kidnappers executed. Caesar's political career was slow to take off, but he gradually built up his support and reputation, and even used personal tragedies for political gain. Such as when Cornelia died in 69 BC, Caesar broke with tradition and used her funeral to grow his support by giving a speech that appealed to the people and showcased his caring side. He spent lavishly, borrowing heavily, and eventually going into debt so that he could continue to give out gifts and buy political influence. Caesar moved up the political ladder of Rome by being elected or named to multiple offices. Caesar formed an alliance with the extremely wealthy politician Marcus Licinius Crassus and the powerful general and politician Gnaeus Pompeius Magnus, later known as Pompey the Great. The three men formed a three-way coalition called a Triumvirate that ruled over the Roman Republic. Caesar also married his only daughter, Julia, to Pompey around 59 BC to forge a closer alliance. The same year he himself entered his third marriage, this time to the teenage Calpurnia, the daughter of another powerful senator. The alliance paid off, and the following year Caesar was placed in charge of a large military force in Gaul. He used the opportunity to conquer the entire region, earning himself a reputation as a capable military commander and making himself fabulously wealthy. However, in 54 BC, Julia died during childbirth, and a year later Crassus was killed in battle, which ended the triumvirate and broke Caesar's alliance with Pompey. By that time, Pompey had begun supporting a conservative faction of the Roman Senate, which declared Julius Caesar an enemy, as the two former allies contended for leadership of the entire Roman state. In 49 BC, Caesar led his troops across the boundary of northern Italy at the Rubicon River and marched on Rome, uttering the now famous phrase that's often translated as, the die is cast. Caesar's move against Rome took Pompey by surprise. He was forced to flee Rome and Italy. Pompey defeated Caesar at the Battle of Dyrrhachium in Albany, but was himself defeated in Greece at the Battle of Pharsalus, which ultimately enabled Caesar to become dictator for life. Caesar's army pursued Pompey all the way to Egypt. Pompey was hoping to rally support there, but was instead killed at the hands of the Egyptians. The following year, Caesar took over Egypt and reinstated Cleopatra as its queen and co-ruler with her younger brother. Cleopatra and Caesar began a romance, but Caesar could not marry Cleopatra as Roman laws did not allow polygamy and he was still married to Calpurnia. Cleopatra gave birth to a son, Caesarian, whom Caesar never acknowledged as his own. After Pompey's death, Julius Caesar assumed control of the government as the sole ruler of the Roman Republic. But the battles were not over. In a letter to the Senate around 47 BC, after he had achieved a quick victory in northern Turkey, Caesar wrote the words, Vini Viri Vici, I came, I saw, I conquered. No matter how much Caesar conquered, there were still many in Rome who opposed the idea of one man, and Caesar in particular, having so much power. But the Roman people loved Caesar's military strength, political skills, and diplomatic savviness. Caesar advocated for his people. He aimed to reduce debt and unemployment, as well as to improve the ordinary Roman people's living standards. He also supported those who had fought for him, and he made plans for the distribution of land to about 15,000 of his veterans. He offered jobs to the poor to work in Rome's overseas colonies, 
granted citizenship to foreigners living in the Republic, and even pardoned former opponents. Finally, the most lasting contribution was his reform of the calendar. After learning about the calendar system in Egypt, Caesar implemented his own in 45 BC. The new Julian calendar had 365 days a year and was intended to be in sync with the solar cycle. And because the actual solar year is almost 365 and a quarter days long, Caesar created a leap day every four years to make up the difference. The Julian calendar was the norm in most of the Western world until the Gregorian calendar, a more modified version, was introduced in the late 16th century. The month that Caesar was born was eventually named July in his honor. So after finally returning to Rome, Caesar became dictator for life in 44 BC. But we all know how that ended. On March 15th of that year, a date known as the Ides of March, a group of senators who had feared that Caesar would overthrow the Senate and make himself king, stabbed Caesar to death in the Senate itself. The senators were quite sly and arranged for more than 60 individuals to be involved in the killing to prevent any one person from taking the blame. His dear friend and mistress's son, Marcus Junius Brutus, was likely involved in the coup, although Caesar's supposed last words, et tu Brute, or you too Brutus, were actually coined by Shakespeare. Caesar was the first person in history to have an autopsy, proving he was stabbed 23 times, and the fatal wound was to his aorta. The whole point of Caesar's assassination was to prevent dictatorship, yet even with Caesar's death, this did not happen. Not only was he already beloved while alive, he left every citizen in Rome three months' wages when he died. Mark Anthony, Caesar's friend, gave a speech that enraged a fire in the hearts of the Roman people. Caesar's death resulted in numerous civil wars that ended the Roman Republic and began the Roman Empire. His adopted son Octavian eventually became the first Roman Emperor and was known as Augustus Caesar thereafter. In fact, the name Caesar became a title for sovereign leaders in many languages, such as the Russian word Tsar and the German word Kaiser, making sure that Julius Caesar will never be forgotten.